Project 9D remote heater is pretty interesting. It may look simple, but this project teaches how electricity can generate heat. If you were to place the fan, the motor with the water wheel attached in a strong steady wind and it spun to produce current, the meter is on the 50 milliamp setting, a resistor, a 47 ohm resistor in the pivot stand will become warm. You won't notice it because of the plastic case that covers it, but it actually becomes warm when current passes through it. You, alternatively, you can blow on the fan, but I can't really get it to work. Alternatively, you can replace the motor with the solar cell and say if you can heat up the resistor using artificial or natural light. It doesn't really seem to have much of an effect right now, but you have a much better idea with how electricity generates heat. Most energy used to make electricity eventually becomes heat. That's why a lot of electronics such as televisions have fans to prevent overheating of components and then lights, especially incandescent lamps, convert a lot of the energy into heat. But LED, LEDs do the same, but not near as much as incandescent lamps. That's why they're good in that they produce less heat. Radio and the horn, a radio and horn, the radio and horn in this kit convert some electricity to sound waves, while the rest becomes heat. You can heat your home by putting a windmill on your roof and using it to heat a resistor in your living room. Electricity is also great for transporting energy, but and here it is used to move energy harnessed from the wind to the resistor where it is used. Now, the power that you use in your home almost always comes from a power plant. For Project 91 remote water heater, you will need a cup of water. Have the ends of the jumper wires in the water and set the meter to the 0.5 milliamp setting. You will use the windmill and the solar cell. When the slide switch is set to position B, the windmill will be used, but when it's set to position C, the solar cell will be used. Basically, we are going to first spin the windmill, and you will see that current is produced. That current, if it is continuous, will heat the water in the cup, and, and then if you want, to use sunlight or light from a lamp, you can move the switch to position C. Now, it's not really noticeable, but a little bit of energy is generated because, although not direct, the solar cell is receiving a small amount of light. Now, this these components would be too small to do so, but if you had larger ones, you could actually heat your home. You could heat water in your home. You could use it for washing, bathing, or drinking. It's very easy to heat your home or the water using wind or solar power. These are both clean methods of energy for doing so. Project 92 is very interesting to me. It's electrical material checker. Basically, you would put different types of materials in between these two snap wires and see whether or not they conduct electricity. You can try so many different things, such as a shirt, a piece of wood or plastic, a paper clip, paper, anything. First, I am going to try this purple piece of construction paper. 
it does not conduct electricity. So it would be an insulator. It insulates electricity. Now I'm going to try the screwdriver. Volume warning, please. Although it's not perfect, I couldn't get a perfect connection. The screwdriver conducts electricity because it's metal. Most metals are conductors and they have low resistance to allow current to flow through. But insulators like paper or plastic have very high resistance and they will either not turn on the horn or would be very, very poor. Now, Let's wet this piece of construction paper by dunking it in water and let's see if that makes a difference in its conductivity because water is a conductor. It doesn't seem to work. Let me try again. It doesn't seem to work this time. What's interesting is that anything can really be a conductor. Like if a tree falls across power lines, the electricity can actually travel through even if it was dry or a dead tree and it can actually electrify the area around it for some distance. So that's why you need to be very careful and never go near anything that has fallen over power lines. Copper is one of the best conductors ever. So that's why it's used in electrical wiring. A lot of electronic test instruments test wires and electrical connections. And they may use a sound device like the horn here. Sometimes you could also make a visual device by replacing the horn with one of the LEDs to as a visual way to test electrical conductivity. 93 is Morse code. I have already told you about how Morse code works in other snap circuits kits because oftentimes they have you learn it in at least one of the projects. But I will just quickly do an overview. I'm using the horn this time and now please turn down your volume because it may be loud, but you can communicate using dots and dashes. Different combinations of dots and dashes stand for different letters, numbers, and punctuation marks. Dots are short beats, while dashes are long beats, beeps. And if you use the appropriate combinations you can say things to other people you can communicate this was an old-fashioned way of communicating and it was the predecessor to the telephone if you really wanted to you could connect very long wires to the horn and the press switch so that if you want to talk to a friend like Via, via a one-way telegraph, you could do so. Your friend could hold the horn while you push the switch. The next project, Morse light, shows how you can communicate in Morse code using a flashing light instead of a horn. It may not be that different, but in the past especially, it was very significant because people in wartime especially could communicate without making noises which could possibly alert the enemy or reveal their location. So they would use lights and it became very beneficial. And you could send this message to friends in a quiet place or possibly even out in the wilderness where your cell phone may not work if you had wires that were long enough. Once again, even Native Americans sent messages to other tribes using smoke signals and a special code. Not using this, of course, 
but smoke signals were like a predecessor to the Morse light. 95 is very involved. Called everything circuit, this uses essentially all of the parts included in this set and there's miniature circuits that you build on the grid and they all use different power sources. The first circuit involves the clock and meter. They are both powered by the rechargeable battery. Set the meter to the 5 volt setting and you can see right now it records just over 3 volts. Between 3 and 3.5 three and volts. Closer to 3.5. The clock is running and then the second circuit use the solar cell and it will power the LEDs. Use the slide switch to control which LED you want on. And if you put enough light on it, it will be, it will come on. Both, and actually both of them do light up because there is some sunlight on the cell. Now if you want to, you can instead connect the motor, the fan to the circuit, but don't do so if you are going to use the solar cell. Only connect it when you're using that. And you can connect the windmill. I don't think I can produce enough power right now. And finally, the third circuit involves turning the hand crank to power the horn and pushing the press which connects the capacitor to make the horn louder and clearer. By the way, the first circuit also has the radio attached. So you can turn it on and then you may not really hear anything. It's not very clear. But you can scan the stations. Alternatively, you could use the liquid holder, which I'm not going to do, but if you want to, you can use the liquid holder to power the LEDs. And here they show you what how to do that. Project 96 is light signal for radio. We'll use the radio with the battery eliminator and we'll turn on, we'll move the slide switch to position C. The LEDs light up very dimly and the radio is off right now, but when I turn on the radio, the red LED lights up. It acts like an indicator light to show you that the radio is on. And then you can disconnect the black wire from the LED and the red LED will become dim or turn off and the yellow LED will also light up again at a reduced output. Then I can reconnect the jumper wire and hold down the press switch and now the yellow LED comes on. It stays on regardless of whether the radio is on or off. But release the press switch and if the radio is on, the red LED comes back on. When the radio is off, the LEDs are not very bright because they are in series in this circuit and there is not enough power to light them sufficiently. 97 requires you to modify the preceding circuit by inserting the horn right over the red LED between points A and B and then the C5 capacitor next to it between points C and D. The positive sides of both components go to the right where the battery holder is and then I will turn on the move the slide switch to position C and the LED will come on. I am going to turn on the radio and please turn down your volume because this may be loud but when I turn on the radio the horn will sound. 
you may not hear anything from the earphones, but when I push down the sw press switch, the horn will stop, the yellow LED will come back on, and depending on the reception, the radio will play. But it does it right now. But that's how this project works. 98 speed indicator requires me to move the slide switch to position B and the fan will spin at moderate speed. It, you may not be able to tell but it's not rotating at full speed and the red LED lights. The meter which is set on the 5 volt setting reads just over half a volt even though they say it's supposed to read about 1 volt but you're supposed to carefully blow on the fan and then if you blow hard enough the red LED will turn off and the yellow LED will come on because the red LED will be bypassed and you can see how much voltage is needed to turn the yellow LED on. I would say it's somewhere between one and one and a half, and a half volts to power up the yellow LED. But you can do the same by holding down the press switch, except now it's at full brightness and the fan will also spin a little faster since the red LED is bypassed and removed from the circuit. Now the meter records just under two and a half volts. Project 99 is sound pulse. We will move the slide switch over to position B and you will hear a brief faint tone from the horn as the C5 capacitor charges. The meter is set to the 5 volt setting and it records just under 1 volt. And now you will move the slide switch to position C and the meter will decrease as energy flows out of the capacitor. Move the switch between positions B and C slowly several times. You can see how the capacitor charges and then discharges. Now for the second part of this project, add the press switch between positions C5 and C7 and when you move the slide switch to position B where it is now and push the press switch. Now turn down your volume please because this will be loud. The capacitor is bypassed and now the horn sounds. When the slide switch is in position C, pushing the press switch will instantly discharge the capacitor as you can see by the meter. It immediately resets to zero.